the Taliban's use of improvised bombs has made travel by road increasingly dangerous. These days, most movement of supplies in Afghanistan are done by air, making the Chinooks a lifeline to troops on the ground. The first task this morning is taking four and a half tons of equipment to the frontline base at Lashkar Gah. Right, there is no average day, I'd say. Every day is very different out here. Potentially, we could be flying for 12, 14 hours before we next have a rest. Um, it, it really can go from one extreme to another. You could be doing nothing, bored, but sometimes you are just so focused, so busy, doing lots of flying, getting shot at, some very dangerous circumstances. <laughs> Few places on earth have seen as many wars as Afghanistan. It's a land where farmers carry Kalashnikov rifles, and there are daily reports of machine guns and rocket-propelled grenades hidden in the hills, just waiting to be used against a passing aircraft. Each Chinook is armed with three high-powered machine guns, and they must always be escorted by an Apache attack helicopter loaded with Hellfire missiles. Despite its rugged beauty, this remains one of the most dangerous places on earth. Dan Padbury, known as Padders, is one of the few single men in the squadron. It's a dating website up the creek without padders. Body type. Mm. I put it athletic. I'm working on it. I say I'm stretching the truth there a little bit. Seven girls have put me on their favourite list so far. What worries me more is their combined weight. <laughs> Not that's necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> In this heat I think a Chinook would struggle. If I'm writing like a, an opening gambit, say there's a girl on there that I think looks pretty cool, so I write her just the opening line, the first point of contact, I'll try and write something witty and funny because I know that chances are, you know, every man and his dog's already tried to write her. So I try and come up with something new, witty, funny. What do I get? I get people who write... Hi, fancy a chat? Six days after the resupply at Sangin, the squadron had been summoned by the commander of all British helicopters, Colonel Neil Sexton. Right, sir, ladies and gentlemen, settle down, please. Settle up and stand up in the back. Um, the light of the land has changed slightly. Sangin's got no better. Musa Carla is out of bounds. Now, Zad, we always get shot. The American Air Force are about to launch a series of massive air and ground assaults to crush the Taliban in Sangin. I will just go through this and explain all of the different friendly force elements that make up this plan, which is several thousand people. This is the biggest uh, operation that's happened uh, since well before Christmas. We cannot afford to lose an aircraft here. It would be a strategic disaster. Whether it's empty with just your four bodies on board or whether it's full with 25 or 30 people with their burdens in the back. The loss of an aircraft here would be a disaster. These will be the biggest air assaults since the war began. In addition to their fleets of up to 24 aircraft, the US Air Force have asked for British Chinooks to join them for the night missions into the Sangin Valley. Squadron leader Ian Diggle is learning that the Americans do things differently. With more aircraft comes a lot more planning. No, I appreciate there's not many of us here. What's he is still down with the Americans now after a two hour and twenty minute brief about this job tomorrow night. He's now going through rehearsals. Um, my crew stay in bed until after lunch. If the colonel starts getting a hess on, just say, look, we are flying late tomorrow night. We're only be flying for about an hour and a half, two hours, so it's not going to be that bad. But the way this American briefing system goes, you know, we might start briefing in the morning for this. Actually, our piece in this is very simple. It's just an incredibly complicated plan the Americans put together. Any questions? 
or any any alibis, as the Americans say. But this is a dedicated operation with massive amounts of air power, massive amount of ground troops, and there's there's no doubt in my mind that we will see some, a, well, we'll see a big fireworks show. This op, no one knows we're coming in. This is secret. This one. So we've got the people where we want them. They can't escape. They can't hide in tunnels. It's just fields and compounds. So we're going to go in at night, making lots of noise, to basically attack these people while they're in position. Unlike previous ops. So I think this is very, very different. It's probably more dangerous. Um, they'll hear us coming for a while. They'll want to defend themselves because they'll be shitting themselves because there's a lot of high-ranking Taliban there. We need to make sure that we don't get caught up in the American plan of flying in straight and level at crazy speeds, like going slow or high or from strange angles. So I think our job is to get the RAF snooks in and back out safely. The first assault will begin at one minute past midnight. Over 1,000 American ground troops will be flown into the remote poppy fields surrounding Sangin. From there, they will enter the town on foot to capture or kill the Taliban fighters who control it. Remember, everyone that's on this aircraft for a little bit longer, this thing's on the ground, big noisy fucking target, bright moon tonight, so off, out, away, go to ground, and that's everyone in the aircraft, and get off, get to a safe position, and we haven't got the usual 15 minutes, everyone's standing at the ramp fucking about. If you do start feeling sick, I don't know if you, any of you get air sick, no point in sitting there and fucking spewing over the person in front of you and upsetting everyone before we get into the site where we need to be, uh, it goes with any other problems. Let someone know if there's a problem. Well, I think that's uh, everything I need to discuss. It's, uh, do you want to go start going through some of your drills now, just loading them up? Come on, load it up. Okay. Um, we're going to land on the HLS. Show you Dan will be in the lead UK aircraft, with Jockey just behind him. For example, the middle of landing site, that objective is 56 metres. For some of these American troops, this will be the biggest operation of their careers. Where are you going? Um, actually I'm not too, too clear on all that. Um, I don't, like, I'm not good with the names around here and everything. Um, Hey, let's go, Phil. Yeah. Where, whereabouts are we going? Sanjin. Well, might as well put my book away. It's time to do some work. I guess. I've been looking forward to this since I found out that we were going to be doing it. Um, and all the briefings we've had over the last few days have really sort of multiplied that feeling. But there's still a few nerves, but um, don't want to fuck up, obviously. Uh, but no, also, time's moving on. So I better get straps in the front. <laughs>